All right, guys, so I'm going to take you through how to track conversions that take place from a Facebook ad. So a couple of important things I want to mention here. When anytime we're sending anyone off of Facebook, so we're sending them to a website or we're sending them anywhere online that's not on Facebook, we need the Facebook pixel in order to track anything. So that's the first and most important thing is you absolutely must get your client to install the pixel. There's no excuses. It has to be there. So if you're not sure how to do that, make sure you watch the pixel training video. So bar that, assuming that you have the pixel installed on the website, there's essentially two ways to track conversions. So uh, people purchasing, it could be people opting into an email, it could be people requesting a quote. Whatever a conversion means for you, there's essentially two ways to track this. The first way is to use what we call a standard event. And then the second way is to use what we call a custom conversion. Now I've got training on both of these, but what I want to quickly do here is just quickly outline and explain the difference between the two. So I'm just, I've just got an image pulled up here which you have access to below as well. So standard events, essentially how it works is it's a little snippet of code that you're going to install as part of the Facebook base pixel. So you're going to install it in the base pixel and the purpose of this snippet of code is it's going to fire or it's going to get triggered anytime someone hits that specific landing page. So you're going to place this on the landing page that confirms a conversion. So that could be, for example, the thank you page after someone buys something. If someone hits the thank you page, it can be safely assumed that they have purchased something, right? They can only hit that page if they've purchased something. So you place the standard event on that thank you page and it's going to trigger anytime someone hits that page. So that's a standard event. The second option, custom conversions, is slightly different in the sense that you don't actually install anything on that landing page. So the base pixel is already there and all you need to create a custom conversion is the URL. So the URL of that thank you page or of that confirmation page or whatever page you are tracking that confirms a conversion, meaning the step after someone has created that conversion, whether it's requesting a quote, opting into a, an email, purchasing something through the website. Now here's something really, really, really important here. So pay attention, this is important. Your reporting will only report back on the event triggers that took place, so the conversions that took place as a result of your Facebook ads. So this is very different to the Facebook pixel in the sense that, so the, the pixel itself, the base pixel on the website, is actually going to track everybody. And it's going to allow you to retarget everybody that visited that website, not just people that came from your ad. Events, standard events and custom conversions, so event tracking or conversion tracking, whatever we call it, is only going to report back in your reporting column the conversions that took place as a result of your Facebook ad. So if you're seeing five conversions, five purchases, the store or your client may have made a lot more purchases. They may have done 25 purchases in the last week, but Facebook is telling you only five of them came from the ad. So that's an important distinction. The second part of that is that Facebook will report up to a window of 28 days, meaning if I click on your Facebook ad today, but I don't buy that shirt or I don't buy that pair of jeans that you showed me an ad of until next week, Facebook is still going to clock that conversion and make it count towards the ad. 
So it's got a conversion window of 28 days. This can sometimes be a problem if your client is working with very, very high ticket stuff. So maybe they're selling bathtubs for 5,000 or they're in the construction industry. So if that's the case, if it's high ticket art or things that take longer than 28 days for people to purchase, so people will think about it a lot longer, then what you want to do in those situations is use offline tracking conversions. And there's a separate training on this as well. In most cases, the 28 day window is more than enough, but just understand that if someone clicks an ad and they only purchase a week later, Facebook will still count that as a purchase and understand that it's only going to report back on the events that occurred as a result of your ads. So let's have a look at the differences between standard events and custom conversions. As I've already explained, one of them is a little bit more intense to install. It's actually a snippet of code that goes into the base code, whereas the other one is actually just pulling up the URL. So the most obvious difference between the two is one is slightly more complicated to install. However, standard events do have more robust tracking, so they are actually more robust and the reason for that is think about it. If your client landing page changes all the time, so it's if, it's, if it's a dynamic URL, if it's changing constantly, it probably is not going to track properly. And this is actually a problem with click funnels. So custom conversions and click funnels don't work very well together at all. It's well known that they don't report properly if you're using click funnels. A big benefit of a standard event is that you need to use standard event for DPA, so dynamic product ads. That's when you're retargeting people based off the specific products that they visited. So this is, for example, Amazon. This is what they do. You visit lots of products on their site and they're going to show you all the different products you actually checked out in a carousel ad or a single image ad, whatever that might be. That's a dynamic product ad and that only works with standard event. It's also instantly installed on some platforms. So for example, if your client's on Shopify, all the standard events, add to cart, purchase, etc., are already on the product page or the specific landing pages that matter. How cool is that? So that saves a lot of headache. So you don't really need to use custom conversions depending on the platform that your client is on. Another benefit of standard events is if you're auditing a client, and you're just checking them out before actually having advertiser access or analyst access to that account, what you can easily do is just check out their website on the internet, right? And as long as you have the Pixel Tool Helper Chrome extension, you'll be able to see standard events that they've installed. So that's a really cool little hack. However, it is a little bit more intense to install. If we look at custom conversions, very easy to install. If your client has no access to their website or their web dev has gone MIA or it's like head office or any of this stuff, um, sometimes you have to use a custom conversion because you don't have the ability to install a piece of code on their site. But bear in mind, you still need the base pixel though for custom conversions and standard events to work. One of the drawbacks is they don't work with DPA. And as I mentioned, there's some issues tracking and they also don't show up on the Pixel Helper browser extension. So I've got this uh, spreadsheet for you below this training video, but what I wanna invite you to do is just have a look in this ad account and I'm actually gonna show you how to pull up both of these. And then what you can do is actually watch the training on standard events and watch the training on custom. All right, so I'm in an ad account here now you can access or you can view standard events by clicking and obviously I'm in business manager here so you click this little hamburger here and if you access your pixel tab you'll see here all the events so there's six more as well so you can see all the events that have been installed or that your client may have been using it's also going to show you the amount of triggers it's had in the last seven days now here's something important here guys, this is standard event, remember that. 
it's showing 700 view replays. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that they all came from my ad. This is just how many triggers has happened on this event. However, if we go into our reporting, so we can pull up, that was called view replay. So we can go in here and go customize columns. And I'm going to go view, whoop, view replay and you'll see it here and we'll do cost per view replay. You can also save this as a preset so that you don't have to keep doing this. And what it does is it now brings it up in the tab. So you'll see here this month actually there was only 500 of them that came from my ads in the last seven days. 243 so it was triggered 700 times but about 500 of those were not from my ads only 240 of them were from my ads and it also shows you the cost per view replay so this is how you bring up a standard event in your reporting dashboard and how you check it out for custom conversions you simply go and click on the hamburger toggle again I don't even know if that's what you call it you click on custom conversions And you'll see here all the custom conversions that your client has used. Now, you can also preview the landing pages that those were placed on. So you'll see here we've got the landing page. So you can bring this up in the web browser and see what that page is, if that's what your client is using. So let's go um, calculator purchased, for example. So I'll go back into my ads manager. And to bring it up, I'll go customize columns. And then I'll go calculator purchased, cost per calculator purchased, and apply. And you'll see here we've only had one for $33. So there you go. Now one of the important things that I just want to mention here is when you're using a custom event and watch the training on standard events, when you're using a custom event, so if I take you into the pixel tab, I'll show you exactly what I mean. So you'll see here, view pixel. This is the base code. And then these are the nine standard events that Facebook provides. However, you'll see here, you can actually create a custom one. So you can name it anything you want. That calculator purchased was an example of a custom event. These are the standard ones they give you. And then this is a custom event. This is different to a custom conversion, guys. Remember, because this still requires you to install this. So it's a custom event, not a custom conversion. Now, if you create a custom event and you can name it whatever you want and you install it pretty much the same way, the difference here is that custom events do not show up in your reporting. This is really, really annoying. So I could create a custom event so for example I had calculator purchase now that wasn't supposed to show up in here it doesn't actually show up in here which is really annoying because how are you supposed to see if it's working right so what you have to do is when you set up a custom event you then create a custom conversion it's a bit of a hack custom conversion of that custom event so we go create custom conversion you'll go Instead of URL, you'll go event and you'll select the event here or whatever you name that custom event. So that was it here. And then you'll create a custom conversion of that event. It takes two seconds, but it means that you can then view it in your reporting. So this is essentially the distinction between standard events and custom conversions. There's two ways to track conversions for anything that takes place outside of Facebook.